So we can start. Talk, which will be in Spanish, uh, in English. Muy buenas tardes, bienvenido a todos al segundo evento. Welcome de to you all to the second event of our series of conversations. Why architecture belongs in the museum? Why architecture belongs in the museum or should be in a museum? We introduce today Ricardo Daza, the director of the Leopoldo Rotten Architecture Museum from National University of Colombia. Ricardo, welcome. I am Marcela Ramos, the director of the Arts, Cinema and Culture of David Rockefeller Center for Latin American Studies from Harvard University. We call it Dr. Class for the short in English. So you will listen to Dr. Class a lot uh, related to uh, how we call ourselves. So I wanted to explain that this series of conversations is part of a major initiative and a longer in term that is so-called Curating Architecture Across the Americas, C-A-A-A, -A -A, Curating curating architecture around America. And this is organized by Dr. Class, our center in cooperation with the architecture and history of arts in Harvard and directed by Patricio Real, the professor, with the aim of getting institutions, curators, and members of the academia to discuss the role of the architecture positions and collections in curating and in the cultural debate of this century. We look with this initiative to introduce the subject in the museums and in the academia environment to establish a dynamic network that is interdisciplinary and transnational as well, where we can exchange these ideas. So the first is uh, curating architecture in October 2019, where we gather historians, architects, and curators who work in Mexico and the United States, focusing on these two countries, the first one, and it was called Context Spaces, Mexico, US. And a third interaction, iteration, sorry, that will be coming on 2026, 2022, absent histories or ips, uh, missing histories that will be in Harvard in 2022, looking for the main objectives to promote historical uh, research and architectural shows. So now we have the series of these major events. There are five. We had one. And there are three to come on April the 7th with Columbia University, Barbie Pedro in New York. April the 21st, Valentina Moimas from Centre Pompidou in Paris, and May the 5th, Professor Del Real from the History of Art um, Department from University of Harvard. This cycle that we are introducing is in parallel with the class Architecture in the Museum by three institutions that are collaborating in this, Harvard University, the Autonomous uh, University of Mexico, UNAM, and Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, PUC. The moderator will tell us a little bit more about this class and course. We just finished the first session of it with these three universities. And uh, I am talking at a personal level now. I feel so happy about the exchange we have uh, experienced. One of the missions of the center is to be able to exchange uh, the faculty and students exchange in the region and this class today is a perfect example that this is well achieved. It is an honor to us to cooperate with UNAM and PUC, and it's a privilege uh, that we feel to thank uh, Carolina Sepulveda from Universidad Católica and Cristina López from UNAM. Cristina will be moderating today. Cristina, she is the history uh, professor in architecture in Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, specializing in Mexican architecture from this 20th century, with a BA in architecture from the UNAM, and a Master of Arts in History of Art Architecture in the city 
from uh, Universidad Politecnica de Catalunya, where she is now uh, preparing for her PhD as a candidate. You will see in the chat her bios, her bio and Ricardo's biography as well, with all the additional information that we are not telling now because of time. So now it's the time for Christina. I will give you some technical data about this webinar, as I said. And just if you just get. We have one hour for uh, working. It will be recorded and it will be available in YouTube through the chat. You have all the information about our events, our social network. But basically, the series, the first event, these and the three to come, will come as long as we are being uh, doing them. And you can go back to YouTube whenever you want. On the chat is disabled now, but we have a Q&A down there where any time you feel through this talk that you have a question, please send that question. We will try to group them and if we can, to ask at the end of the talk. Thank you, Christina. The floor is yours. Hello and good afternoon to all of you. As it was said before, Marcel explained that what we're doing is a class that has been developed as parallel seminars together with uh, the history of arts and architecture in Harvard and the masters in architecture from faculty of our department of design and urban studies of Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile and the editorial laboratory of architecture in the department of architecture in Universidad Autónoma de México. The title is architecture it belongs to a museum, but we say between commas quoting museum because the Latin American environment and the exhibitions are not always in a museum environment. So in that sense, it is important for us, very important to have Ricardo Daza so he could tell us a very special case in Latin America where we do have an architectural museum and specialized. I will tell you a little bit more about what we want in this seminar is to tell a little bit about why and how architecture comes into a museum. The fact that in some architecture departments and design come out in the museums and how this situation operates for some architecture that goes away from their or place in the world and in a complex relationship with the society in the day by day and then it becomes a particular part of the exhibitions of architecture. So what we look for here is analyzing the phenomena and how they operate as a power artifacts. We are studying materials, what is an exhibition, the, the archive, the curation strategies, the museography, each of these classes will be focusing on their national context, but work together. We're trying these three institutions to work together so we could create a geography to put together the Americas in the study of these cultural practices of curating. That said, we now have Ricardo Daza. And he will provide key information on how these circumstances operate. He's an architect. Ricardo uh, is an architect from Universidad Nacional de Colombia, the National University of Colombia, with a master's degree in history, art, architecture, and the city from the Polytechnic University of Catalonia, where he uh, received his PhD in projects professor of theory and director of projects on the bachelor's, the master's, and the PhD, and the coordinator of the architecture projects line of the PhD in arts, architecture uh, at the National University of Columbia, 
has been visiting professor in Brazil, Ecuador, Spain, Chile, Italy, Mexico, Paraguay, Peru, and Venezuela, let's say lots of countries, and curator of several exhibitions, as well as author of the famous book in which you find mice and uh, Tras el viaje de Oriente uh, about the Le Corbusier and many articles and specialized publications. It is interesting to know that uh, he is participating in Leopoldo Rothi uh, Museum now. Ricardo, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Cristina. I will share the screen now. Let me know if you can see my screen. We can. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Dr. Class, David Rockefeller, uh, Studies for Latin America, uh, Universidad Católica de Chile and Universidad Autónoma de México, UNAM, for the invitation done to Marcela Ramos, Cristela Lopez, Carolina Sepulveda, and especially my dear friend Patricio del Real, who has been fundamental creating projects and events which allowed the link between the north and the south, the south and the north, that is to say America. With me today we have Laura Sepulveda and Gabriela Silva, architects, part of the team who works at the museum, fundamental to create the pedagogy of a space. This is space pedagogy we are trying to build in this new direction that I have been appointed two years ago. I was the director and now we are with a new policy. Leopoldo Rother Architectural Museum is a place for exhibitions, events, research, outreach, a space for reflection and to have critique to the architectural thoughts with diverse manifestations. The museum invites the influence in architectural students, the publics, the architects, to participate in the events that are scheduled and promoted. This museum is focusing on expanding the borders of knowledge in the architectural field, but it's also aiming to create connections with some other fields and disciplines, developing research in architecture as their support activity to create projects and events, as well as the exhibitions. Further explanation, well, I will explain now, but we're interested in creating relationships exchange mu with museums and institutes and universities at an international and national level. With more than 30 years of history, it's the only architectural museum in Colombia and one of the very few in Latin America. That scenario for meeting is the epicenter of the debate and critical reflection on national architecture. We aim to have the same for the international architecture. What you see now is a pretty uh, easy way to look at Bogota, a place that is located in the middle of Colombia. As you can see in this plan view uh, on the pilot uh, drawing of Le Corbusier with a very strategic place away from the sea in the central highlands and Cordillera, you see that there's a flat in Bogota in its origin. It is 2,640 meters above sea level, a very big city with around 8 million inhabitants. The Museum of Architecture is located in the campus of the university city. In that area of Bogota, you see the plan, plan of uh, the city with a uh, really accelerated growth since the 1950s. You see the location within the university campus that's the first public university of the country from 1936, in fact. And we can see the picture on where the project is and the current status. But we have to say 
that the National University was planned by the German architect Leopoldo Rother and the pedagogy uh, expert Fritz Carlsen. This is the 1930s and 1936 where it is inaugurated and Bogota was a small city, not tall in height. And the campus of the university represented modernity and really pushed for development and the growth of the city to the west part. One of the first buildings in this campus was precisely the building of the print. In its origin, it was the print of the university by Leopoldo Rother, that was an immigrant because of the Nazi situation. And in 1986, the printing house turned into the Architectural Museum with more than 30 years, in fact, 35 years of history. What you see here is an image of the building. It's a real jewel of Rother with a refined architecture, I would say exceptional because of the work that is so linked to the clean architecture that Rother uh, characterized. And we don't know why it, it turned more to expressionism. The museum, as you see, is linked at, uh, as a university building linked to the Department of Architecture, Facultad de Arquitectura. We don't have a building for architecture because it failed because of the structure. It's fun to say. We're building a new building now for architecture and arts. And that's why one of the reasons why it is an important role. Arts faculty and arts department is cinema, television, arts, uh, paint, so it's an incredible network of connection, but we have to say that this museum is together with the arts department and the School of Architecture. So the connection of disciplines are stressful, let's say, but very interesting. In fact, there's a network within the university itself, a network of museums. The Architectural Museum is linked to the network of university museums at a national level and outside of the campus, we have the cluster of St. Augustine, a place where we have uh, a pole outside of the university with important contacts with the National Museum at an archive level and with the Bank of the Republic, we have a collaboration. We are part of a network of museums that is recently founded, have been, has been founded by my Ecuador, Cat, Bolivia, MAP, Argentina, CAH, Honduras, Cap Peru, Mozart, Venezuela, and Sao Uruguay. It's being created and we are starting the collaboration and maybe it's an important point to debate. We want to establish relationships with museums in other places and centers in North and Central America. Because of the teaching, the university museums should have a role that is fundamental, articulating research and promotion of heritage, the updating of the history, and the experimentation of form, communication, education. We want a place for reflection that is critical. We have the image of the museum currently. It's a beautiful place, as it used to be the printing house, the adaptation to be a museum was interesting with ramps, great space for machine. Interventions were done with other activities that the museum had, but the space condition and the intervention created were fortunate, I would say. And now we have a space with several important rooms, three big rooms at a different scale and size to talk about the major architects of Colombia, Gabriel Serrano room, elevated room, another important one, Fernando Martinez, which is the center of the museum, as it used to be the machine room of the printing house, a beautiful space with great light, 
appropriate for exhibitions. Likewise, we do have the auditorium where we are showing events and conferences today, but now it has been replaced because of this remote virtual world. And there's another space, another level, creating a very special place for assembly in architectural shows. We will not talk that much about the exhibitions that we've done, but let's make and have some reflection on what we do now. It, in, it is in fact important to mention that the printing house was restored and the first floor was created in a room of archives where we have the collection that is permanent, a very important collection of approximately 10 important collections of the central participants like Rother for Modernity and Violi Nasi Kaskov Venezuela, an important collection that was cr critical for constructing and building houses in the country and some other Colombian architects that are very important. The archive is the central point for this museum as it generates the research or the majority of our research. You can check that in our website of this museum. It's about 12,000 scanned um, files. We can uh, lend uh, for master's degree and PhD exchange of museums. Patricio del Real know that we have drawings from Fernando Martinez that you take for MoMA and the exhibition of Latin America under construction that has been done in MoMA, we just found a very interesting thing, which is the source of the works of Leopoldo Rother in Germany with Klaustadt uh, University. And we now have the link to arrive to Rother files and its archive as he was prolific in uh, Germany and we have not much of that information. So the invitation is get into this website that is there and check our archive. One of the first events we performed, which we started generating under this new administration to deploy the archive. So we want to show the original drawings, but in general, we do that touching some other themes like specific themes, like in this moment for the students to see the drawings that were the original drawings. It's a sort of cycle of exhibitions where we show different aspects that could cross on a singular theme or single theme. The archive is important as this is part of the research. We are connected with other museums as well for conservation. There's a team that is working. It's not too big. This is a university museum, so our budget is not that high. However, we think that big part of the process of scanning, and we have a more fluent vehicle as this is connected to a network of documentation of the university. In the future, what we want is that all the university museums are connected to this documents base that is connected to the base or database of the National Museum. So it will be triggering something that is well prepared to query these files and archives. The research is very important. We teach. We need to uh, create actions for architectural uh, teaching. So we are interested to reflect critically about architecture internally and outside of our country while creating the stories and the museography experimentation, creating a museum that is a center for debate is important. So I hope that you have seen through our website, the centers we create, we are interested in having major reflection to expand into the university scope. Universidad Nacional is a secular university, so we are free to express ourselves and that's important. Research is important, but we do 
work not just with our co collection but international also i will show you something of course the archive is helpful for preparing master's degree and phd degrees thesis and the collections and creating and recreating the research that we do from the thesis that will be created afterwards in an exhibition we have a team created by a director a creative team administrative team and the consultancy committee i will not explain more in that because of what i want to show is the way we face COVID, how we enter this new notion in our proposition of management that we called space pedagogy space pedagogy moves with six subjects that we will talk about maybe fast or one by one so we get into the nitty-gritty for the structure of the museum research is important the student groups we attempt to create a connection from undergraduate going through master's degree and phds and to get a more integral relationship with some outreach or promotion and this is to create exhibitions workshops and events that you will see that they cross with these subjects that i want to achieve uh, in an explanation of course covid was a surprise with two exhibitions that we were preparing one was victims and the other island city the theme was seclusion and being really locked down it was like a prophecy victims was something that you can know from john hedjuk uh, that talked about the holocaust of the nazi and we wanted a co uh, story about victims for colombia is strong with a war that has been the third longest in duration that has not been solved yet so in curating arts and museography many artists and colombian curators are recognized all over the world because of their exhibitions and very good artists but architecture exhibitions and reflecting about architecture i'm not talking about a museum containing but reflecting the architecture in their own debate in the situation of the memory of the victims, I think we're quite lagging behind. One of the subjects we want to explore is subjects that are presentation and showing exhibitions related to the story, to the narrative, looking how they affect the media medium, affecting the past that was close and the present to come. So this exhibition about the Nazi Holocaust has been translated to see how from architecture we could create a story and a narrative to talk and place in the center the debate of a conflict, not just from the perspective of the art, as I mentioned before, but from architecture itself. The second exhibition that was precisely there previous to COVID is Ciudad Isla in Spanish, Island City, I was prepared by a research uh, group from Susuric University, uh, Los Andes University, supported by the Switzerland Embassy. We have some rec resources from the arts department, but we look for some support from other institutes and embassies like this one from Switzerland. This exhibition in was an attempt to show privatization and the enclosure of some buildings that was a provoking thing we are interested in the debate the strong situation with architecture within our city so the island city was talking about privatization privatizing as in any latin american city this is a global phenomenon it becomes a private city so the exhibition was whistleblowing that practically 38 percent of the population is in a very enclosed place with uh, defense around this is a private city bogota is 
manifesting this and we wanted to manifest that situation. So this is a research that has been long in duration. I am really interested in translating this research into something interesting. The students of ETH Zurich researched this problem in Bogota that was channeled through Colombian researchers. Then we created an articulation to create the museography that could be this whistleblowing idea. As you see, the problem, you know better, is not Colombian, but global. The phenomena of enclosed cities that are excluded, especially accented by coronavirus, is right on top of the table. So these two exhibitions entered the moment we started working. Something that we were preparing already about creating pedagogy uh, for space. So the space pedagogy is the pedagogy of architecture. We wanted to learn about the creative process of uh, works and creating the narrative. So we created a strategy, a strategy of action facing coronavirus, starting from several points. Some of them are related more to the representation where we work with drawings, photography, audiovisuals, and manual and digital models, trying to create a sort of a group of creative uh, use. We call it lines of travel. They explore the representation through drawing, the artistic drawing, the technical drawing, which is the exploration of the architecture in a city through drawings. We established this. I think it's important. We have a good group for working with uh, collective uh, builders working in Bogota, Dibujada, and others are working in the city of Bogota as well. And we wanted to articulate this within the museum. So this was, is a reflection on uh, picture and catches and the private psychology, we launched the exhibitions with workshops and we created events where the uh, sketching and pictures are a determining factor. The museum has been studied. We are linked with Salerno University in the Italian world. Uh, sketching is important. Also uh, drawings with uh, University of Bologna that have as an end the visualization of the representation means. Massimo Liceri group is a group that in includes the scanning of buildings. We had a special a scanning of the building of this museum, which is already scanned. As we use this building as an object or an object of poem reaction, we're not that interested in the architectural business of the museum because the debate is there, but we want to see the building as the place for experimentation, just like in the city and island. We close the building. When we close, Heritage came and they say, you're closing this building. They were not uh, nice because we were talking about enclosure. We were talking about uh, being confined. So the building itself was used as the experimentation lab laboratory, not just to hang works, but we are interested in the action on the building itself. I would love to add that in lines of travel, we want to explore architecture in the city through drawings or sketches. In that case, we want to face COVID. So we decided to use the virtual world as the means to gather around a non-virtual city to trigger observation and reflection in our surrounding environment is observing the house, the city, what happens with confinement. And that's one of our uh, main tools to move to virtuality, not losing the connection with the real world. Precisely that.
another issue is the way we see modos de ver on pictures and photography and audiovisual uh, records, which is the trend as well. And we know that we were thinking of theme cinema as in many museums, but we want the students to see tactic of assembly exploration. We had a theme cycle, but the interest is that they know about the cinema, especially in the assembly and the narrative. And we invited them to check the experiments we've done. You can talk to them and ask them this exploration from or that starts from video with the virtual world and the situation we live now. It is no doubt that we will continue to uh, go through virtuality and we will continue exploring with virtual recreations that are linked to exhibitions. The other subject matter we launched in COVID was gathering photographies of the history of the building itself. As you know, I know if you really know, but from the 1930s, we have very few uh, sources of information. We have sort of scanned the history of it, but we want to hunt material that could allow us to supplement the archive, not just to mention about Rother and the building, but also Universidad Nacional. Post COVID, what we're planning is another exhibition with the Leonardo Finotti photographer. Leonardo is thinking of Latinitudes, which we want to, in a transversal manner, look at Latin America through photography. At the two stages crossing modernity, Leonardo Finotti has really worked uh, importantly for MoMA, he traveled all South America. There's an important uh, work of his past of cities, as Borges says, cities are more fixed than countries. So we want to have the notion of a country, a very abstract thing. In the dynamic of arts, architecture and trends, it, they move creating different maps. And I think this is a very important thing in the dilution of the border idea. We're work, working on that. Leonardo is working on the present moment, uh, thinking about signatures. So, so we want to check the transition to modernity and then liquid modernity. Call it what you want, but there's a transition. I think it is important to highlight the idea with photography, which is documenting the present. As we are now in a transition moment and a change moment, we need to know that we need to look for new narratives through photography for this moment. To be shown in a future exhibition. So what we see during pandemic is without the building, analyzing and debating about the city and analyzing the means in which we live, the environment, not just that, but documenting it as well. So we could have a record of what is happening now. The third subject is 3D lab, reflecting about manual models, digital models, experimentation and parameters. 3D lab is mock-ups and models lab and prototypes. And it's important for us because the mock-up and many theses talk about that of models and the, doc the doctorate and the PhD that I coordinate. We are working head by head by Joseph Ginard, the architect, and it is good to say this is the group that, uh, that is working with Ginas, 
Jesse Ginez and Stephen Hall are predicting two important buildings for Universidad Nacional. The Stephen Hall building is for postgraduates in human sciences and law that, as a paradox, is so close to the museum, almost in front. It is not yet built. It's under the process of it. So we want to achieve that. And the Josep Ginez, the Catalonian architect, is intervening. One building of Rother, very interesting, as both of them are facing, confronting Rother. Many of the buildings are uh, Rothers in planning. So it's interesting to reflect on the creative processes. For us, it is key that our exhibitions are not just being created or uh, to have the myth of authors that we have done in the past. When we show an author, we want to show their creative processes. So it's like face-to-face -to, -face to show projects in the campus that could create uh, tangential and divergence situations when they approach the university campus. This is already in progress, connecting the offices of architects. The subject in specific, in the case of Josep Chinas, is more direct work from models. If you don't know his work, manual work of drawings of Ginard is an impressive thing. Models prepared in the workshop for mockups and superposition also. And then there's an interesting debate with ourselves, with the lab, with the laboratory for 3D models with laser cut. And the debate is so interesting, even for technical resolution, which also allows for the reflection of the architect in their own process. So we're interested in exploring the mockups and models with conceptual value and artistic presence. Models that inside in creative processes and as Orda Forty Eliasson will say, the co-producers of reality as mockups themselves in the exhibitions have a character that is not just a character that are a mediation for building a uh, building itself, but the model as such acquires their own static dimension. That is an exploration that you know is important for exhibitions, but they get more strength in the architecture exhibitions. As Ricardo so well explained, and the subject matter of our conversation is space pedagogy, we want to link the students. So 3D lab is with one food in the professional and the other in the academia and with seminars and workshops they start understanding what it is to have a model like this so these seminars are teaching these main programs how they uh, could achieve something or what we expect to achieve in the learning and models and a difference that is a digital model one-to-one -one and a digital model for a mock-up that is important for each case. And also, it allows experimentation with new technology like 3D printing, CNC cutting, and thermal formation that comes from Miguel Ferrero hands, which is a link that allows the students to understand these new technologies and apply them in their own processes. Apart from that, the seminars linked or motivate the students to be linked to the museum and the museographic side of explaining architecture and showing the architecture. So these students that have gone through these seminars, they linked in student groups. The final objective of 3D Lab, as Miguel Forero said, is that we understand that mock-ups are not made by hand, but by the head. Well, what Gabriela just said is a key thing for us. The assembly of an exhibition, bringing exhibitions, we do that. What we want and we are interested is that the students are part of the execution and the museography, not as an external entity, but in action. 
the fourth thing to touch the last subjects is interior exterior that thinks about architecture from the inside and from the outside trying to incentivize the critique on the study of architecture from the exterior but bringing back the importance of the interior of the spaces we inhabit architecture as you know is shown from the outside right and historiography i could not generalized but we have a vision of historiography that is coming from the outside and time ago we arrived to a statement that looks the exterior with a bigger group this was a proposition of Rogelio Salmona Foundation a Ministry of Culture with Ingrid as professor, we created a script of an exhibition that was so-called from the interior, the space of Colombian architecture in the 20th century. But in that sense, in the museum, we have the uh, scale of this uh, exhibition in which we are interested in the psychology of the interior, psychology of the exterior because of COVID. So what we bet on COVID, which we, we work now, is family stories when confined and the narrative of the pandemic, plus a critique of the small housing and the house itself as a mere theme of um, income and profitability when you have the really uh, poor situation, no windows, not terrace, not a place to look at. So what we want to open is the debate of the housing. We have seen it in the island city, which was critiqued to public space that is dying. And in this case, we want to look into the ins inside of the stories and the interior psychology. Our reflections will be more in the cabinet of the curiosity in the 15th century or 18th century uh, rooms like the ones shown or Pamuk in the theater of innocence. I mean, the familiar museum of history, Pakmuk in the critique shows the creation of stories that could bring out daily situations and the relationship between the body and the space. We are interested in uh, Javier de Castro's reflection on miniature models and the idea of miniature, even with COVID and this pandemic situation, if it uh, continues or new viruses come, we are in the relationship of the interior. So we need a new narrative or egg phrases when we think of Ernesto Castro and the reflection of visual phenomena that become textual phenomena, the tension between the real and the fake and the creation of new stories. And we need to create a new fiction between our inside the fictions we're living. If we continue in this pandemic, we need to create virtual stories are traveled inside of our room to uh, recall Javier de Mestre. This is key as we're thinking of the miniature, the cabinet, and the notion of the inside space. As you know, with COVID, all the problems and psychological drama uh, has been highlighted. Pandemic created the interior and exterior issue to be more important, not just for the architects, but for everyone. After one year in the same place, in the same room, in the same desk, in the same study, you create an interior analysis that is deeper and deeper, especially for the architects that they start understanding space in a more personal way. So what we want to achieve with this gathering of stories of the pandemic is to understand at what level of analysis and in what way 
the interior space touch the people and understanding or bringing back the importance of the interior space to, archite space to architecture because in this pandemic thing we live more the interior than the exterior and apart from that we have the possibility of experiencing the uh, three with 3d lab these uh, miniature cabinets trying to through this experimentation trying to narrate stories which is what we want to achieve dialogues and we will touch the fifth subject it's six we still have seven minutes to go dialogues is reflecting on the present in fact confinement by pandemic created other ways to learn outside of the classroom through any site through internet just as we're doing now with a bigger audience that simultaneously is interactively uh, working we're working with conferences before COVID. There was Bauhaus uh, 16, 17 conferences looking for Bauhaus and Latin America. But in the COVID uh, world, we launched a cycle that was lessons from distance in which we were interested in showing what the architects of the alma mater were doing in the architectural production and in research. So we cross projects with uh, research to have a more transversal view to see what in the architecture was being done and what's uh, research in this research and creation as the source of creating in our exhibitions. In the present, 15 days ago, we launched a new cycle. Every fortnight, we have a cycle that has been organized in the museum in Bogota and Manizales, Medellin, to break this centralized view of Bogota or Medellin. All the uh, campuses got together to create the event, and this is so-called conversations from distance. Conversations from the distance are aiming to put together two architects or two groups of architects to have a subject matter to debate, like creative processes. Then as fall, we want to uh, mention the actors of the moment, the architects there to open the debate and talk, to uh, talk about their thematic things like technical things, social housing, or the house for social interest, the VIP, they call it here, which is totally abandoned by architects and it's in hands of construction businesses and uh, entrepreneurs or enterprises. How the Colombian see the critique of the role of architecture, if there's any? Well, a series of debates, you're invited to participate in these debates which as an objective have the idea of building a material that is dense enough in order to create an exhibition of architecture. And for that, we created a students group, several groups in the museum that are strong. And they have almost their own life. These researchers are um, interviewing the main architectural uh, characters, creating a map, researching about 50 central characters that are in the central position with these interviews in order to uh, kind of uh, cut, cross cutting the combination of the debate of young people that had created a story, a uh, graphic story, the way of expressing through videos and others. What I insist is the idea of sitting is very fundamental for us to create this cross. You have to see the good and the bad. This year, the same museum team has not been able to meet beyond once or one time. If we could gather uh, lessons and conversations of architecture is organized from the three departments, Bogota, Maganizales, and Medellin, which is not easy to do. 
but we were able to do that and through 19 conferences we did not just uh, get together but we arrived to some cities and municipalities in Colombia which are not easy to get in teaching architecture so it was very interesting to achieve coming out from 80 students in Bruno Violi to more than 200 in a uh, Google Meet conference so that was the positive side that we were able to achieve a bigger scope in teaching architecture and Colombian architecture, which was our subject. With conversations of architecture from distance, we talk about polemic situations of architecture, not just uh, in Colombia, but global. But this push for talks about architecture are talked by uh, the students in an important subject. And the last subject matter is teaching architecture for children. Teaching architecture for children and city, I would say, for children and parents. We have an agreement with two uh, collectives in a museum that is so-called Lunaticos. The groups of architectures, uh, arch architects were able to have workshops, especially for a school, children and we have gathered information detecting that in Bogota only three schools teach architecture the rest is painting music arts and architecture is just a given never reflecting about the architecture the city how uh, the groups are, affect, are affected in the school so there's some uh, emptiness and we want to come from the infant into architecture there's some other groups in colombia who work with children but we think this is the central subject we have to be sincere we have not been able to create any action with children during pandemic we tried we tried to create worship but it was impossible so what this shows is pandemic created a uh, lack of connection that we are not able to reconnect and is showing that the sector that is more affected in the population is right there very interesting workshops more than 38 workshops more than 10 courses with lunaticos uh, lunarchicos with 10 more than 10 years of existence also menor with more years we created libertad and confinement, freedom and confinement, libertad y encierro, to show in the familiar environment when parents leave and they stay on their own, the psychology that this creates on children. Post-COVID, what we want is to say the other way around, like from confinement to freedom and through the analysis, how the experience has been and how the experience has been for children. Any teaching for us needs to start by the infant. And in fact, it is taught by playing. The framework to educate is playing the games. Like Benjamin said, children are the educators of the educators and even their parents. Recovering infancy as the possibility for imagination. That is it. For creation, even for the creation of exhibitions, children should teach the adults as we the adults lost that children we should have inside remember saramago said if you don't get that children you have inside then you lost now getting to the conclusion to finish I have to say that at this stage, the museum team has a resources policy and preparing in a plan for recovering the physical plant and the damage that has been done because of this abandonment of one year, implementing sanitary measures and protection to come back as we plan, hopefully for the second term, 
that the university is not yet open uh, in the museum. So we could continue performing the exhibitions we used to have and the events we had. So please pay attention for the events, uh, connect to that, collaborate with us. The proposition is space pedagogy. That is transformation, not just the view of the spectator, but also activation of all the senses. With COVID-19, it is the whole body of the society that is in crisis, the society as a whole in thinking the works and actions in front of the means and environment surrounding us. For that, we need the action of collaboration at a local and global scale, the dialogue, the conversations, being it from distance like we are doing now. For us, architecture is crucial in the debate as architecture is the one to open or close, to connect or disconnect the borders of the private awareness, the world of public conscience and the natural world that protects, bring us in and surround us. Being linked costs liberty, not the absence of it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ricardo. There's no doubt this is a wonderful example of that work that you're doing in Colombia. It attracted our attention how far from being the traditional museum where you see the authors uh, mystifying and the aesthetic dimension that you meant you talked about from the building itself if you see it as the container of works the museum will be the artifact that helps in the debate to support the object of poetic reaction for experiencing a place where we have the uh, space pedagogy experience and the action with people. I think this splits from the traditional idea of museum, a very good idea for Latin America, for all of us that are opening to debate to see what happens with COVID and how their lives will change. Uh, to prepare now to go to the questions, we already have some Zoom questions. I hope that Marcela could tell us some words. Thank you, Ricardo, for the presentation. Just a practical thing. When you ask questions, should you go back to panel members if you want to open your cameras that would be ideal so we could ask live and Ricardo can see you we just wanted to see that you will be part of the recording and the video if you if you open your screens and if you can say your name and from where are you affiliated so Ricardo could um, no better. Before we go to these questions, thank you very much for the uh, Silva and Laura Sepulveda. It supplements the talk together with Ricardo. We know you work in teams and you create this link that is so important between the research archive and museum. That is always like, hey, this is what we look for, especially in the university museums at a public level or national level with the links we have. And it works like an apparatus to open a debate, to respond, research, and to question. So I don't know if you want that. Ana Luisa Dor, you want to share your question? I 
experimentation, right? I'm like, I'm wondering um, how you guys select the kind of exhibition that you, you, you display in this museum. It's like more interesting how the curatorial process is like a group of people that can, that you discuss and participate. There is any kind of open call that anyone could um, apply for some specific ideas to exhibit there. Um, yes, that's it. Um, I was uh, studying like a alumni from GSD um, and I did my master in art design. So I'm very interested in this topic. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Ana Luisa, for your question. Well, we really have an interest that is big enough in a museum for creating a story, the narrative. But the process, the process of the curatorial process for me as a director is more interesting to have the real integration of a debate, especially as we commented, this is a university museum. We were able to create a, an important team of research. As you see through uh, these uh, media, we have the reflection that does not go against, but it's the notion of architecture, that drawing hanging in the wall. I don't think it's wrong, but the idea of the plant view, cut, facade, uh, putting together is something that we're not interested in anymore. We want to explore more the space. As we have a defined space and we've done so many exhibitions, we are aware of the space. So breaking this border and frontier of placing a drawing and exploring narratives, exploring processes with mockups, models, interactions, and stories that could be told in a different way, creating an experience with the space itself, thinking of that space that could be linked to the statement of the exhibition, creating the atmosphere notion that affects the spectator. That's important for us. We've been for so long with the museum and some sort of particular exhibitions, but the proposal is more and more against uh, the suggestion of themes and to translate and escalate upwards or downwards, but with an end and looking for the atmosphere. So you affect the spectator, the spectator participates, that's the role in the exhibition. It's not just passive a spectator. So when at the beginning we were talking about looking in the continuous revision of the strategy of arts or other artistic disciplines, it is because we're interested in, in other artistic fields or in other sort of museums, even in Colombia itself, we have a big exploration about the arts museum so the thing for us is like reading the dynamic of the museography or creating our own where the spectator plays the role of participation to and not just that flat relationship that we are used so used to it and we are bored about it Gabriela, would you like to add something? Sure, I will. Ana Lucia asked if there's any opening for presenting uh, exhibitions in the museum. No, there's not, but I want to emphasize we have two sorts of exhibitions. Collaborations as Ciudad Isla with a group of research with a master's Regalopes, Regalopoli thesis with the University of Zurich, etc. But we have some other sort of uh, exhibitions that are created by our own team, our own uh, working team. So the, we have that duality. We want to experience that, not just in collaboration, saying do this, do that, but as uh, work in teams and looking for the interest of the group 
that we have been able to create through these uh, years of work together. Thank you, Gabriela. I'd like to ask you to uh, open your cameras when you ask a question. We have another question, Eric Serrano. Hello, good afternoon. I am Eric Serrano from Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, UNAM. First, I'd like to thank you and take the opportunity for uh, this wonderful uh, and passionate uh, artistic work. I would say artisanal works in some stages and to use this to open the debate of subject matters that is not just of the Colombian society, but global. I think it is very interesting that work that you're doing together as a team and the way in which through collaboration you grow and do things that are very interesting, opening discussion that are important. I think it's passionate. I want to tell you I'm interested in any way of collaboration. I would love to participate with you. There's no other way than doing it as you are doing. I think it's a spectacular even at the distance or in presence. Who would not love to go back to the beautiful country of Colombia? My question is around the social uncertainty that we're living now. How can we plan and project in the future with this uh, sociographic uh, labor that we want to generate in this panorama where we don't even know if we could open or create a space where we could generate an exhibition or if, if it, this will be totally digital? How can you achieve that? Thank you. Well, several things. On one hand, we have the artisanal and artistic, as we said, and the transition between the manual and digital, I think. If we fall in one of the extremes, it could be as dangerous as falling into the other. Through the travel lines, lineas de viaje and models, we work with the hands, but we are aware that there's machines coming. So the organic mechanic relationship, I think it's one of the big debates that is losing the action of that hand. We are quite aware of this tension and risk and how virtual somewhat attacks the uh, body experience. If we are just optical and flat, in the notion of the flat itself where there's no uh, holes. I think uh, virtual Hunter in the transparency and smoothness, we need to be aware of artisanal, but we're not naive. There's something that is going to virtual if the situation is complicated, it's right there. If you've seen some of the points we work with interest is the notion of domestic things. We have shown the domestic cabinet, the virtuality, because it is very likely that it will be a trip inside yourself. We're all living this. We think we have uh, positive aspects of the situation that is meditating on the individual, the relationship on the family or their intimacy. This almost Prussian uh, reflection in my room and the creating of a parallel work. So when I talked about the ekphrasis notion, we are more interested in creating the narrative. Within the narrative of the domestic environment in the familiar, we can get material that is pretty interesting. The notion of the small and the world that goes into the inside in regards to the situation in which we have uh, proposed. On the other hand, we have what you said. Of course, there's several questions with a local character, but also global. As we have shown, we are interested in that debate. Not to be naive, 
in the regionalism, we have problems like this one, the global warming problems that the confinement as well, global problems that we will deal with from the experience in the museum for years, then come back as a director of a museum. I want to place debates that are interesting that could be translated in a critical way as an exhibition to really face a real problem, not just showing the glory of the author and how beautiful it is. That's cool, that's fine. But if it is possible, we would love to see the uh, creative processes. Laura wanted to add something. Yes. When you ask about prediction with uncertainty, we try not to plan unnecessary exhibitions by creating strategies where exhibitions could fit. So we don't think of an exhibition like one sort of event, but one event with many others around it where the other events could be executed at a certain stage in a virtualized world. We attempt with our team to create different future scenarios and the imaginary of creating different narratives like different paths that we could walk as really we are living a major uncertainty and we're not able to make decisions what to do tomorrow in such an exhibition but prepare in that way for what comes, uh, we could have a vision that is ready then. Thank you, Laura. We have very little time left. We have just one more question from Michael or Michael Ferrero. But Michael Ferrero, please be brief and Ricardo and uh, collaborators be brief in your answers. Hello and thank you very much for this event, Patricio, Cristina, Marcela, Ricardo. I am Michael Andres Forero. I am a PhD in history and theory with a research team that is a curatorial research in uh, the Netherlands, researching about architecture exhibitions. And my question is, because I'm really interested in this presentation, is this the network of emotions in Latin America that you, I mean, read a network of museums is there some institutional exchange of human teams how is the collaboration and if there's any difference with icam can you please expand on that thank you michael we know you're a friend of our museum as you have uh, been writing us that network was signed as a group. We had some meetings uh, a while ago. So we are creating this collaborating network. We had some meetings. We launched MAPA as a Latin American project. We do not have yet a definition that is very specific on how the collaboration will be. But obviously, it is of interest I am strongly linked with the Ecuadorian team where they tried on the Biennial uh, Quito uh, uh, Architecture Biennial in uh, Quito. I cannot be such a, a specific person on actions as we are defining the collaboration now. But you have seen, just to close, what we are interested in is conversations. And that's where uh, the thing is now. In Zoom. But if you uh, please send it to Marcela Ramos. For all the participants, please tell Ricardo. I think it's important, relevant, and it will be interesting. Well, we could send some of the questions uh, answered in written if you want. Well, thank you very much. Marcela, would you like to say goodbye? No, that's it. And just what Christina said, my email is in the contacts page to all the museum team. Thank you very much. It's been an honor to have you with us participating, adding this 
uh, perspective from Colombia to all the information that we are preparing with this series. Thank you, Christina. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys.